Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Irene and today I'll show you how to make a nice false window for your garden, balcony or even your home out of an old mirror. Such a mirror will make a nice decoration, will help amplify your space and even make a dark corner lighter. We are renovating our studio now, disassembling and removing some old furniture from the air and in one of the old cabinets on the back wall there was a mirror. We took it out and almost threw it away with the rest of the parts, but at the last moment I felt like I wanted to keep it. At first I thought to try aging it, but then a better idea came. I could make a garden window. I've come across fake f windows like this on Pinterest and I've always liked the idea. The garden is reflected in a mirror and it looks like the garden continues behind the frame. So let's try to DIY such a fake window. The mirror I have is not very large, it's 18 by 12 inches and I'll make a window with shutters, like in an old English cottage. We bought unfinished pine leverage shutters, hinges, a piece of lumber for making the frame and I'll be using some leftover lumber as well. I'll start with making the shutters. I'll have to cut down the shutters I've bought because my mirror is only 18 inches wide and the shutters they sell are no less than 16 inches each, which is too wide. Fortunately, this is not so hard to do. I'm measuring how wide the finished shutter should be. The mirror in the frame will be 21 and a half inches wide, so a finished shutter should be 10 and 3 quarter inches. I'm cutting off the upper and the lower part of the frame of each shutter with a hack saw. We've left our good saw in the city apartment, so here I have to do with an old hack saw for metal and a hand saw, which is not very precise. After that, I'll knock out the frame carefully, all the planks here just sit in the grooves, they are not glued, so the shutter is pretty easy to disassemble. Here we go! I'm removing all the planks, I'll deal with them a bit later and setting aside the half of the frame of the right size. After that, I'm cutting off the parts of the frame from above and from below, off the second leftover half, so that I could make the shutter narrower. This is how the finished frame looks after cutting. I'm doing just the same with the second shutter. I'm cutting the frame from above and from below at the desired width. I'm disassembling the front by knocking the planks out. I'm removing all the planks from the grooves. And finally I'm cutting off the extra parts of the frame. Now it's time to cut off the planks. Each plank sits into the groove on the frame by about half an inch, so I'm measuring the width of the shutter inside the frame, adding an inch extra and cutting off all the planks to the required length. To make all the planks the same size, I've made a simple limiter by clamping a piece of wood to the mitre saw at the right distance from the cutting blade, and I've rested all the planks against it. You can use a regular jigsaw here as well, some size inaccuracy is possible here because all the planks will sit in the grooves and no one will actually see this. I'm also trimming the frames to be nice and even and we are ready for the assembly. I'm going to assemble the shutters using wood glue. Unlike the manufacturers of these shutters, I've decided to glue all the planks into the grooves. It will be much stronger like this. I'll use waterproof wood glue here since the mirror is supposed to sit outside. I'm applying a little glue into each groove and dispersing it along the sides. I'm placing the planks onto one side of the frame. Then I'm tapping them a little so that they sit in the grooves more tightly. Then I'm coating the grooves on the second part of the frame as well as the junctions with glue. And finally I'm assembling the shutter back. Here I've had to tinker until all the planks fall into the grooves. It's more convenient to turn the shutter this side down. After all the planks are into place, I'm tapping the frame until everything is connected tightly. 
I'm clamping the finished shutter, waiting for it to dry, and we're done with them. I'll also cut the shutter's short sides a little since they are much larger than the mirror itself. I'm making the short parts of the frame the same width as the long parts that were originally wider. And finally I'm sanding the shutters to round off all the sharp edges and to remove any splintering. I'm measuring the finished shutters and I'm going to make the window frame based on this size. I'll need to extend the frame in order to adjust it to the height of the shutters and also because I want to make the window a more elongated one as the mirror itself is almost square. I've picked the right size and I'm cutting two extension pieces. The size is equal to the width of the frame. I'm also cutting the parts of the frame from a piece of lumber 2 by 2 inches, which I bought in a hardware store. Here I used the shutter size as a guide. Here is how the assembled window will look. I'm going to assemble the frame using a pocket hole connection. I'm drilling holes in the short parts of the frame and extension pieces. And then I'm clamping the frame. I'm doing this because the extension pieces are less deep than the rest of the frame and I need them to sit flush with this frame on the inside. I'm turning the frame wrong side up and then I'm fastening everything. And We've got the window. I've decided to make a curved top for this window. I'll cut it out of a leftover piece of wood from building our gazebo. I'm measuring the width of the frame and then marking and cutting off the excess. Here I've had to cut just a bit. And then I'm sanding the piece. Oh, how I wish it was that fast in real life. I'm drawing the top template and cutting it out. Then I'm tracing the template onto the workpiece and finally cutting it out with a jigsaw. Here, most of all, I was afraid to cut through the table. This is what it will look like after assembly. I've decided to add a trim along the perimeter of the frame. I've seen a similar design on Pinterest and I really liked how it looked. And the most complicated part of the work here is to make the top curvy frame sitting over the curvy top. To make it, I'm cutting out three identical parts out of thin leftover pieces of wood having the same shape as the main top part, an inch wide and an inch longer than the edges of the main part on each side. I'm cutting the outer edge first and then the inner one. This part is not so easy to make, but actually you can do without the curved top and keep it simple by making the window just a rectangular one. As for me, I can't get by with a simple option, as usual. I'm gluing the three finished parts together using waterproof wood glue, clamping and leaving to dry well. After that, I'm giving this part a good sand using grit 40 to even out the surface and to make this piece sit tight over the main top part. It's a bit tricky to have a perfect match without special tools here. And finally, I'm attaching the finished piece to the top using wood glue. And here is where the mirror appears. To install it into the frame, you want to make a recess on the inside using a router. Gary helps me with this as usual. I'm still afraid using a router myself. He makes a recess equal to the de depth of the glass. We have it 5 mm thick. The width of the recess is different on all the sides. It's wider above and below and is quite narrow on the sides. Let's try it out. Perfect. Meanwhile, the top curvy part has dried and I'll install it. I'm clamping the part to avoid wiggling and fastening it to place. Here I'm using pocket hole connection as well. To finish the frame, I'm attaching narrow planks on the sides. Here I've selected the size to fit the upper curvy part. So I ended up with a trim about an inch wide around the entire window. Let's try out the shutters. 
Before attaching them, I'm staining both the shutters and the frame itself. Actually, I haven't decided yet about the window color. I'm thinking of painting it gray and sanding off some paint to get that distressed look, or maybe I'll just leave it like it is. The stain I'm using is Varathan Briar Smoke. I absolutely love this shade. It's grayish and has that vintage feel. I think it looks just gorgeous in a garden. Next I'm fastening the hinges to the shutters and attaching them to the frame. And finally I'm installing the mirror. I'm fixing it on the inside with a small plywood triangles. We've decided not to make the back wall. The window is quite heavy and we don't want to make it even heavier. And all that is left is to hang the window. Gary is attaching hanging plates. And here is how it turned out. I absolutely love this open window effect when you can see the garden inside the frame. Even if you keep it simple and do without the curved top and the trim, I'm sure that such a window will become one of the most outstanding decoration for your garden, balcony or home. Well, I hope you liked today's project. Please let me know what you think of it down below. By the way, I have another video about uh, making a DIY mirror frame. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave the link for it below. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next one. Bye!